Hello everyone. In a previous video I talked about some special case solutions to the three body problem. The problem that when you have more than two objects that are gravitationally attracted to one another, we don't have a set of equations that correctly describes their motion under all conditions. But there's another special solution to the three body problem that has important applications in spaceflight and in understanding the dynamics of our solar system. If you're a space buff you may have heard of Lagrange points. Lagrange points are positions in space where the combined gravitational force from two bodies balances in such a way that a third body placed at one of those points maintains its position relative to the other two bodies. That is, it co-orbits with them. This is sometimes jokingly called a two and a half body problem because the calculation assumes that the third body is a massless test particle that does not exert any gravitational influence of its own but the solution still works for real objects floating in space. For any two-body system like the Earth and the Moon or the Sun and Jupiter, there are five Lagrange points called L1 to L5 and they can be calculated using physics you may have learned in high school. To help visualize the calculation, let's imagine two bodies, for example the Sun and Jupiter, mounted on a turntable. The Sun is not at the center because planets don't really orbit the Sun they orbit around their combined center of mass with the Sun. The center of mass is the point of rotation in this model. Next, we add our massless test particle. Imagine a speck of dust floating in space under the gravitational influence of the Sun and Jupiter. The turntable rotates, mimicking the orbits of Jupiter and the Sun. In the frame of reference of the turntable, the rotation manifests as a centrifugal force pushing the test particle away from the center. What we need to do is calculate the points where the centrifugal force on the particle is balanced out by the gravitational pull of the two bodies. The possible solutions can be quickly narrowed down because to achieve this balance, the combined gravitational force must act through the point of rotation. The first point, called L1, is between the Sun and Jupiter. Any closer to the Sun and the gravitational pull of the Sun becomes too strong and the particle is pulled inwards any closer to Jupiter and the particle is flung outwards. The second Lagrange point, L2, is outside of the planet. At this point the Sun and Jupiter are both pulling the particle inwards, preventing it from being flung further out. L3 is on the opposite side of the Sun from the planet. Again the combined gravity of the Sun and Jupiter is pulling the particle inwards, preventing it from being flung outwards. The final Lagrange points, L4 and L5, form equilateral triangles with the Sun and Jupiter. At these points, the particle is equidistant from the two bodies, and so their combined gravitational force still acts through the system's center of mass. By calculating the combined kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy of the test particle, and using conservation of energy, we can analyze the stability of the Lagrange points. The L1, L2 and L3 points are unstable. If a particle at this position is nudged, say by the gravity of another planet, it easily falls out of these orbits, like a ball rolling down a hill. However, if one of the massive bodies is at least 25 times heavier than the other, as is the case with the Earth and the Moon, or the Sun and any of the planets, the L4 and L5 positions are stable. If a particle at one of these positions is nudged, it will slowly oscillate around that point. Because of this stability, planets tend to acquire asteroids at their L4 and L5 points. These asteroids are called trojans. Earth has one trojan at its L4 point. Mars has four. A few have been found for Uranus and Neptune. But Jupiter has loads. Jupiter's strong gravity means its L4 and L5 points are stable over a very large region of space, and so Jupiter has accumulated millions of Trojan asteroids that co-orbit with it. Lagrange points are very useful for some space missions. NASA's SOHO probe has been placed at Earth's L1 point, where it gets an uninterrupted view of the Sun without straying too far from the Earth. The Discover satellite is also at L1, but pointing the other way so that it gets an uninterrupted view of the daytime side of the Earth. The WMAP probe that measured the afterglow of the Big Bang was placed at Earth's L2 point, and the upcoming James Webb Space Telescope will also be placed at L2 in the coming years. 
The L2 point is useful for sensitive space probes because the extra distance from the Sun helps to keep the spacecraft systems cool. There doesn't seem to be any particular use for L3, and so far the only use for the L4 and L5 points is in science fiction, where writers like to imagine the construction of self-sustaining space colonies. Whether or not we get space colonies, the Lagrange points are going to be important for science and space exploration for a long time to come.